Good morning and welcome to William Penn News Now. I'm Tyler Hafner. Bingo night came to William Penn last night at the Penn Cafe. Students had a chance to win many prizes. Some prizes included William Penn attire, gift cards to Walmart and Subway. The grand prizes included Beats by Dre and an Xbox One. The event is sponsored by the William Penn University Advancement Office with prizes donated by PASS, Booster Club, William Penn Bookstore, and other generous donors. WPNN would like to congratulate all the participants as well as the winners. The university held its traditional Dean's Convocation on the 22nd of February. Randy Jones was the invited speaker for the occasion. The event coincided with the week of MLK Day and Penn's unique part in civil rights history was highlighted. The week of Martin Luther King, Penn hosted the Spring Convocation. Each year, a speaker is selected and invited to the campus to talk to the student body. This year, Randy Jones was chosen. Jones concentrated her speech on the life of Coretta Scott King and discussed the value of music in history. As African Americans, the, the music of, uh, is part of our culture. It came with us. It was basically the one thing we could bring from Africa. Um, music was a dominant part, it, it uh, played a role in every aspect of African life. And so when the slaves were brought to this country, that one element that they could have some control over, that music, uh, was something that was a, a nurturing, it was a, a way of surviving. In the past, Penn Speaker had a sports affiliation. This year, Dr. Saley explains the choice in Randy Jones as Speaker. Well, partially because of the difference. We had, for the last three years, brought in someone who could encourage athletes to higher achievement. And when Dr. Hoeksema suggested <clears throat> Randy Jones, who he had seen perform and, and, and talk to an audience, he suggested she might be someone who would be very interesting the campus, especially because it falls, convocation falls on that week when we honor Martin Luther King. During the convocation, another prolific civil rights figure is highlighted, Marian Anderson. It was related that Anderson had came to William Penn and is considered one of the finest contraltos of her time and set the stage for the civil rights era. She came to support the president, uh, Cecil Hinshaw, and put on a performance and over 800 people came. It was really amazing. Unfortunately, there are some, um, uh, some really bad things that happened. She couldn't find a hotel room to stay in in Anascaloosa. The Hotel Fort Des Moines allowed her to stay there and that's just heartbreaking that she wasn't welcome you know, to stay in our town. And um, she wanted to support the president she came and put on this fantastic performance, but unfortunately it wasn't enough and he ended up resigning. There wasn't enough support to, for his administration, which was really sad. He uh, wore a suit that night and usually people, if they went to the opera, would have wore a um, tuxedo, but he didn't because he was a Quaker and really felt like every, he, he had the Quaker saying, your life should speak, let your life speak, meaning your actions and your words should always match. And he believed in equality for everyone. This is Shane Moore reporting for WPNN. For more about Jones's speech, please visit the Statesman status. The next convocation will be during the fall semester. Say some basketball was in action at home against Clark January 28th. WPNN brings you more information on why what happened that night was more than just a game. This past week, William Penn took on Clark during Coaches vs. Cancer Night. Before the contest, we sat down with Wade Steinlogge, Sports Information Director, to get his thoughts on what breast cancer means to this university. He told us that it's a lot more than just wearing pink. There's a lot of people that are affected by it or that have someone they know that is affected by it. Pink's mainly about breast cancer, but cancer is a horrible disease, and any chance we get to talk about it, bring awareness to it, and raise a little money for it is always a good thing. The women's basketball team played Clark University, coming up short against them. Throughout the game, both teams were showing their support by wearing Coaches vs. Cancer t-shirts, as well as socks for the event. Even though this was a competitive game, both teams put their prides aside to show their support for this great cause. However, the men came out victorious, winning 94-54. After the game, WPNN caught up with Coach Henry to get his thoughts on what this game means to breast cancer victims nationwide. He said that breast cancer awareness is obviously important, 
Across this nation, it's an epidemic, and any time basketball or sports in general can help with something like this, it's a no-brainer. William Penn's men's team also expressed their support at the game by wearing the Coaches vs. Cancer t-shirts. William Penn University's Coaches vs. Cancer Night is just one of the many ways the school raises awareness of cancer. For WPNN, I'm Tyler Hafner. The William Penn Statesman next basketball game is set to tip off tonight at 5.30 against Grandview. Penn continues to be at the forefront of science and technology. Last week, William Penn hosted a STEM event here on campus. STEM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Penn held many sessions on the second and third floor of the PAC and in the MTC. Students learn how to make connections between school, community, work, and the global enterprise enabling the development of STEM. WPNN caught up with Geographic Information Systems instructor Debbie Stevens. One of the things about STEM, those are very important disciplines and they are the disciplines that, that we really need more people involved in and invested in. In fact, some say that we have lost ground to other countries because we are not promoting those as much. For more information about STEM projects in Iowa, visit www.iowastem.gov. William Penn University will be hosting a visit day for high school students interested in a career in the media field. The visit day is set for February 10th. Students will get hands-on experience working in three separate workshops. Those workshops include TV news studio, radio station, while also learning the importance of sound effects as well as storytelling. There will be 82 students and nine chaperones from five schools attending this year's visit day. That number is up from last year's total, which was around 50. The program has had more high schools wanting to attend, so the possibility of a second visit day may be in the works. We're hoping to do one. Um, we might not be able to repeat uh, some of the aspects we wanted to, like the, uh, the keynote speaker, maybe even the iPads. Uh, we'll, we'll have to do something a little different with that, but yeah, we have, we've had almost overwhelming uh, interest. And that wraps things up for this month's WPNN. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for more news and information here on your campus.